Greetings, everyone out there across the planet, across the universe, wherever you are tuning in from. This is Shauna Ava, and you're listening to Heart On Radio. I have such an incredible guest here. I'm thrilled to have you, and um, Sandra Walter, you are primarily in Mount Shasta, so it's really exciting and beautiful that you're here in Sedona to do this and share this with us and our, our people out there listening. So, Let's start with a few breaths to just get centered. <laughs> and here we go. Oh. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me in that. And thank you so much for being here today with us. There's really so much going on um, this past year, especially August and September felt like... Um, like the Olympics or, or it was spiritual like Olympics. spiritual Olympics, exactly. Or it felt like the final exams in college where you're just cramming and all of these things are um, coalescing at the same time. And it felt like expansion and then retraction and expansion and retra- retraction and could be really confusing. <laughs> so I definitely want to get into some of the downloads and what you're hearing and receiving and feeling. Um, but I also, for those who are not familiar with Sandra Walter, and it is Sandra, right? Because I know yes. people, okay, good, good. Because I know people can go, you know, Sandra D. And so, <laughs> but, but it's Sandra. Um, but I want to start, for those who who maybe don't aren't familiar with your work, start out with just a little bit about how this all began for you. And this will probably take you a ways back because you've been, I feel, a light, a light worker and a way shower for quite a while now before it became like the... The new, new, the thing to do, you've been in the game for a while, and I'm just so curious how that started for you. Well, when I was younger, like many of us, you know, you're having experiences in your bedroom, in your parents' house, you know, with different beings and different weird dreams and things like yes. that. So there was definitely interaction and and uh, a lot of guides showing up early mm. in childhood. And that was like a really precious time for me because I felt like I was in uh, in the know of Ooh. this other realm. Yeah. However, I didn't have um, people in my immediate vicinity that were experiencing that. Mm. I didn't have uh, friends or family that were psychic or experiencing these other realms. But it became very precious to me. You know, it was something I was keeping journals and and um, you know writing all those wow. all these cool stories that I thought were just you know stories that were coming from these guides that I had. But then as I progressed, uh, I went into performing and different expressions of creativity because I had always been fascinated with creativity, with how we were able to create things for other people and share experiences through that, through art. Yes. So whether it was painting or designing or performing, singing, anything, um, I've done it all. You know, I've really <laughs> like just explored all of that. Oh and then uh, I started awakening. I started having strong awakening experiences. Wow. And in 99, I went suddenly clairaudient, claircognizant, literally on January 1st, 1999. It just got turned on. Wow. And it was messages were coming in every day, and then they got longer, and I was writing them down, and I was sharing them. Yeah. And it turned into... Uh, learning what I was here to do. So all of us have these mm, these missions or service work that we wake up to, you know, through the awakening process. And it really is, you can see, like, all the skills that you were working on before you woke up, all the things that you had been creating mm-hmm. or your jobs, you know, employment or whatever, were kind of pointing you in the direction of, yeah. oh, you're going to need all this stuff when, when the time <laughs> comes for you to wake up and go fully into service. And that's exactly yes. what happened with me. Oh. So it was a big combination of not just working for IT, but working in creative fields and just kind of merging the whole thing right. into, oh, now I'm going to be able to receive and teach yeah. at the same time. So it's been uh, an, definitely an interesting path. But the more that I wake up to the multidimensional self through this ascension process, the more it becomes just so elegant and beautiful to me how we're all 
just representations of these things that are actually occurring in the higher realms. Mm. And for me, that's like this cosmic, psychedelic kind of experience where you really get to take a look at all the fractalization and how it's all starting to connect the dots. You know, the fractals like kind of sprayed out and now they're kind of coming back together mm -hmm. in this way of not just... Um, not just coagulating, you know, back together as one, but the experience of oneness becomes very palpable. Mm -hmm. And that's something that myself and kind of the High Vibe tribe are going through right now. Yes. Especially with all of these beautiful cosmic events and trigger points that we have since March this year. Mm -hmm. We had this very strong division of timelines starting to occur uh, in a more palpable way, the timeline split began last mm. September, then March was another division, and then you get primary timeline access, and all of these different things are happening, you get the eclipse, and you get the <laughs> equinox, and the next thing you know, it's just like these things are happening yeah. at a much more accelerated and amplified rate than they used to be. Mm -hmm. So now even you know the the lowest levels of awakening are starting to go, Something else is going on, you know? <laughs> like they're starting to accelerate because the high vibe drug is getting so accelerated yeah. and so vibed up that by quantum effect is just kind of picking up everybody, you mm. know? And that's the whole intention of embodiment of this Christed crystal in unity consciousness is the yes. more of us that can get into that fully embodied state where it's consistent. Yeah. You know, you wake up every morning, it's just there. It's just there throughout the whole day. You're just in the now, in the presence, in that multidimensional merge. And you feel it happening to yourself. It's very difficult to describe. Mm -hmm. But you feel it happening to yourself and you're like, how, do, how can we you know, provide this to everyone? So we do oh, like the unity meditations yes. and things to kind of feed it out into the field so that oh. people can just tap into it. And you start experiencing that quantum effect of the human heart grid and see like how it's working in tandem with Gaia opening access to new earth experiences and the primary timelines kind of taking everybody into the 5D consciousness. And it's really beautiful. I find yes. it very elegant. Yes. Well, you definitely carry that essence. You, you, you do. And that's not just, that's just, you've come to me in dream time once before. And I remember what it was, was you just saying, I was like, wow, are we here? And you're like, yeah. We're already here. And everything was glowing and lights and everything just carried this rainbow hue to it. And so that was really proof in the pudding to me that um, to see you there, because you're not someone I unfortunately get to see very often, but you appeared the night before I had a, a session and you were like, yep, girl, we're here. And I was like, this is so cool. And I know that you spend a lot of time on the land, off the grid, and I feel that that is so, so important, especially right now. It's like, it almost feels like, oh, mom, I have a tummy ache. I need to go lay on Mother Gaia and just listen to her heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> and I can get emotional, so I'm going to try not to. <laughs> but there is that level of but comfort. Yeah, yeah. It, there is. And, it, and I, I, I would love you to, to, to touch on that a bit more, the role that Gaia plays in our intertangling and with her I mean we are of her you 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 carry her essence is what I'm trying to say when I'm around you I feel that nurturing peaceful knowingness immovable connectedness yeah. so what role does she play play in your in your life and how do you communicate and what kind of advice could you give to people in regards to that for me it when I fully embraced that Oh, how do you want to label it? Divine Feminine, Cosmic Mother, Gaia. Yeah. It's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, this our experience in this planet on this planetary consciousness and these different holographic realities that yeah. we're all interacting <laughs> with. This experience is something that is is played out in these lower realities as a way of resolving what happened in the higher realms. Mm. So we have this this being to Sophia and she you know has this fall she gets tempted by these beings to you know you can come to the next higher level and she's like oh it really she gets totally enamored with the higher level and then it gets betrayed and oh. steered off path and mm. you know the Christ comes down this is an old Gnostic story wow. so it's it's the uh, you know the Christ figure the Christ presence comes down and he's like what's going on you know he finds 
Sophia in this state and being betrayed and everything. And he's like, here's what we'll do. You are, it's kind of a cosmic penance or a way of sorting out all this distortion and these falls from grace and all these different deceptions and everything that were happening actually in the higher realms and in the lower realms it gets a little gray gray wow. you know, you're exploring <laughs> all of that and what it can do to consciousness right and it's all source you know it's mm-hmm. all source just dreaming having this experience mm-hmm. of you know life in a universe and what what would that be like and if it gets distorted how do i bring it back you know mm-hmm. kind of thing mm-hmm. and part of that resolution of what actually occurred in the higher realms is our experience in the planetary consciousness so gaia the planetary representation does represent that divine feminine that got a little betrayed but she was also the cause of that so there's all these different things going on Mm -hmm. you know and you can see you can either but you don't have to believe the story. You yeah. just look around you mm-hmm. and and experience that. Like, well, yeah, there's been this patriarchal thing going on. Yes. And it's it really it's getting like, very distorted in some areas. Right. But there's also this presence. And, and I feel this, this Christed presence has such a divine feminine, um, you know, go get them kind of energy to it mm-hmm. where it just flows back in. You know, because the Christ did say, I will come and get you when things get really bad. I'll come and get you and everything's going to be raised back into glory, you know, Mm -hmm. and it'll all be good. Yeah. But you just have to go through this for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, in the cosmic perspective, it's nothing like that. I know. Yeah. (laughs) But in our experience, you know, we are actually those higher beings going, okay, I'm going to fractalize out into this experience. Right. And make it all good. You know, and some people are like, well, I will make it all good by exploring the edges of evil. Right. And some people are like, I will, you mm-hmm. know, make it well by exploring the edges of how high can we get the vibration in such a low reality. Yes. And you can feel how that's, there's closure now. Mm-hmm. You know, when you get those messages of like, we're here, we created it. Gaia created the higher new earth ascended state already. Mm-hmm. Now we're on our way to that full experience. You can feel the embodiment hitting the high vibe tribe and now you're carrying that energy and it gets it's the divine feminine energy or that Gaia energy or cosmic mother all the same thing to me in my in my mind but it feels um, the reason why it feels so radically different is because we haven't experienced like the full force Mm. of a fully balanced divine masculine divine feminine yes in a long time yes so you're like well you get glimpses of it you know it's just like the that now presence experience that we're going through right now of this Mm -hmm. feeling past present and future all at the same time it's because that balance is coming back and now you're finally able to feel the full experience right of a a source consciousness, a unity consciousness. You know, it's the step before you can return back to source and go, okay, now we're good. Let's create the next thing. I'm wondering if that has ever existed to your knowledge or your belief um, in the past, you know, Atlantean times. Did we ever have a a full Christed embodiment? Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. and because the planetary consciousness is a reflection of that story, Mm -hmm. she was in that full divine feminine presence at one point. And then, you know, we had this, the story of the fall had to be resolved on this planet. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, the falls from grace and all those stories and everything. And now I have a real, a very strong sense that the stories are complete. And it seems like the minute you can grok the story, it's done. Mm -hmm. You know, the minute you you comprehend something, it's like this this morphogenetic field, you know, resonation where you're just like, the minute one person gets it, you're like, you could feel it like trickling through the collective consciousness so much faster than it used to be, you know, and we can comprehend that. And the minute that you comprehend, oh, Mm -hmm. that's what it's about, then you can move on. Yes. You know, you no longer have to linger or cling to those old stories at all anymore. You're like, oh yeah, that's a story we used so that we could understand and get to the next level. Yeah. And now that we're embracing next level, that seems, especially the people who are embracing this embodiment experience, Mm -hmm. you start experiencing not just the summation of the past and this absolute presence of the now and the merge of all your different aspects, but you also feel the future as a very present thing. Mm -hmm. 
So it's not just this prediction thing that we've been going through with the whole New Age movement. It's not about that. It's like you can start to tap in and feel, oh, Source is actually rewriting the entire universe. You know, that was one of our stories with all this. Oh, the Source is actually recalling the whole universe and it's going to change into something else. Well, now you're having this palpable experience of like, that's happening right now, you know, <laughs> right now. And that it's, you know, what is the next universe look like you know then we're starting to feel into well what what it's what does source want next because it's like the, with the time collapse you start getting access to that yeah. and the beautiful thing is none of us are allowed to look at it feel it <laughs> express it because you can't express it with the tools that we have in the body vehicle it's right now. right now right right now exactly right now exactly however we seem to be moving into this next phase of our ascension and the consciousness yes. and the higher timeline access and everything, which speeds everything up. Yes. So it makes it really, again, beautiful, elegant, perfect. You know, all we're doing right now is attempting to get our beloved brothers and sisters who may have got enamored or mm -hmm. with the habit of um, yes. engaging with, you know, conspiracy and lower density stuff and got distracted or whatever... And go, if you would just let that go, yes. something else available right now. So we're kind of attempting to pull as many people with us, you know, when the gateway's open to to the New Earth experience completely, mm -hmm. you know, which is a cosmic event, which mm -hmm. we're all watching the pieces come together. Yeah. You know, and in our linear experience, there will be a consciousness changing dimensional shifting events mm -hmm. um, and some people are saying oh it's a solar flash I feel like it's that and the planet and your heart center go into this synchronization mm -hmm. that causes your consciousness to just kind of be absorbed into the next thing um, and which may be a very freaky experience for people who are you know, innocent bystanders, but <laughs> <laughs> we're not really sure how that's going to go down because, right. you know, in, in our, our absolute compassion yeah. and our absolute non-judgment and our highest discernment, we, we're now the embodiment of those masters and we know we can project ourselves into the reality in a very kind and loving way so mm -hmm. that it doesn't get too freaky and we don't shake the matrix too hard. Right. You know, kind of thing. Yeah. No, I, I truly appreciate you bringing that up <laughs> because that was right on the forefront of my, my mind and my heart because I know that obviously you are a little ahead of the curve and there are those way showers and light workers who are ahead of the cur curve for a reason to light the way and help us. So what I have been noticing a lot of the lower chakra energies really coming up again, that any kind of fear or insecurities or, or things that you thought maybe you dealt with or you, um, you know, were able to, okay, put that in a box and I'm, and I'm okay. It's like the box is opening again. And a lot of this seems to be clearing out and it can be very disjointing for those who are not quite, you know, in, in completely integrating the Christed consciousness yet. So what kind of encouragement or light can you shed on that or tips on how to, to remedy that? Well, even that core healing that we were talking about earlier, yeah. even that core healing is it's happening on a tribal, you know, the giant human tribe, the right. collective. Yes. You know, and we can see it playing out in different ways. But I feel like the most important thing to do is to recognize it and feel it. You know, that's, that's, I know it's basic to an ascension process is like emotional clearing is step three. You, know? <laughs> yeah, you can't get past step three. And if you jump over step three, you're going to get thrown back. From it's going to come back. Step three <laughs> until you get through. You're, yeah. she, Sandra's always, she doesn't realize this, but she's basically quoting this card already that oh, we have really? for the week. Yeah, so much of what you're saying, it's like if you haven't dealt with it, it's going to just come back around. Yeah, and I know we always say that, but now people are getting the full force of that because yes. the boomerang effect of the magnetics. Mm. getting stronger and stronger you know zero yes. point is like ding 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 ding. You know? it's like, <laughs> come on you know you got to keep up otherwise it just yeah. plows right over you yes so if you if you want a conscious ascension process if you mm -hmm. want to embrace that and that's you know step one is it is it a choice mm -hmm. you know do you want to use your free will choice to choose to embrace 
an ascension process. Yeah. You know, not just waking up and realizing, oh, it's all illusion or whatever. Yeah. You know, that's pretty basic to any awakening. But when you fully embrace an ascension process and make a choice, "Mm, I'm going to be, this is the incarnation where I'm going to go for it. Yeah. And I understand that there's these huge cosmic things that people have been talking about for millennia. (laughs) And now we're getting you know, the reception of all of those prophecies and everything yeah. are right in our face. <laughs> yes. And we're like, you know, it, and it has nothing to do with these biblical predictions of like, you know, world ending or whatever. It's like, yeah, honey, you know what? That world's already gone. It's been gone since 2012, actually mm-hmm. 2010, yeah. you know, and that has been dissolved completely. Mm-hmm. And we're, it's the only reason why it still exists on a collective level mm-hmm. is because we're all creator incarnate. The right. human genome is killer strong. <laughs> you know? It's like amazing stuff. And yeah. you are actually a reflection of source. So whatever you want to create, it manifests. Mm-hmm. And as these things manifest at a faster and faster rate you also get the boomerang effect of Mm. if you're you know avoiding your own baggage it gets you know thrown off the (laughs) the airline uh, conveyor belt (laughs) that's a great visual it's like check this bag you know i'm sorry (laughs) we're gonna have to check this go ahead yeah yeah Yeah, exactly Mm. so that's the the first thing is making the conscious choice that you want to um that you want to clear it Yes. That you want to heal. There's got to be that desire there. Not like I want to. I want to heal because I'm afraid I'm not going to make the ascension gateway. Yeah. You know. I mean, that used to be a thing, especially yeah. like before 2012. People were freaking out. You know, they were like, "How do I don't want to yeah. miss the gate?" You know. Yep. And you could feel people having that experience again. Like, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. And it's because there is this event. This thing Mm -hmm. in our field and we can feel it you know i i just had a gathering in here in sedona where we went through like all those cosmic factors that are affecting our ascension Mm. and all these like stargates are opening up and the trinity stargates and that's why it feels so different that's why the high vibe tribe and the light tribe are having so many different and more expansive experiences and it feels Mm. beautiful and you want to invite everybody to the table Mm -hmm. but they have to they have to want, want to be at the table. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't drag them kicking and screaming. Yeah. But the first thing is to to really, you know, be present with yourself mm-hmm. and go, okay, I've got this thing I need to get over. Now I am going to choose to take a look at what is the cause, core, record, and effect of <laughs> what I have created. Mm-hmm. Take full responsibility for your own journey. Mm. That's huge. Yeah. You know, you can't go to a healer and they can't give you the cosmic Shazam no. and know you were healed of all, <laughs> everything. It's got to be you. Mm-hmm. It's got to be you. This is an empowerment, a self-empowerment process. Mm-hmm. And the, the reason for an ascension of this ilk, you know, on this planetary consciousness, the reason why you come here is to learn how to be that true creator being again, mm-hmm. which means... They can seal you up in a lead box as far away from source as possible and you will know who you are and you will rediscover your path back to source. That's the whole reason to go through such a challenging ascension process is you can go to other worlds and other realms and you get it. You Mm -hmm. understand. Ah, that's where they are. Okay, here's how you do it. Here's how you do it. Here's how you get out of there. You know, the cosmic battles are, are going to come to a complete um, dissolvement, you know, there's none of that any longer when you embrace this higher level of consciousness. Mm-hmm. And but you'll be able to assist people who are still in that level or at that realm, yeah. Because um, you know, if Source is indeed recalling the entire universe, all that stuff is going to be resolved. Wow, all that stuff is going to be, you know, is going to unfold to its further furthest point, you know, furthest exploration. And you can feel it already. It's being sucked back into source consciousness. You know, where source is like reach the edges of how far it wanted to explore, you know, duality and, and things like that. Yeah. And now it's coming back into unity and it's really beautiful. Mm-hmm. But along the way, you know, the, the personal journey, the little um, intuitive guidance that you get, you're like, well, I really need to take a look at this thing. Yeah. Here it is again. You know, <laughs> it keeps coming up because it will keep coming back until you deal with it. Yeah. You know, that's been the usual path of, of any awakening process. Yeah. But you can see now that you can fly through that process so much 
faster. Mm-hmm. You know, everything oh. is accelerating because we're creating these vast healing matrixes for people to step into. You yes. know, it's just like you can feel these like interconnected webs of healing space that are created, yes. and even like through the unity uh, meditations. You know, there's that field, and people are tapping into it, even when it's not mm-hmm. a Sunday. Going, I just want to. I just need just that support it, right yep. now. Mm-hmm. And you could feel it because we have people who are embracing that that ascended state yes. in form, so that it makes it so much easier for everybody else. Yes, yeah. that is definitely holding holding space. I guess there's a lot of people refer to it holding that space. And I remember having low moments and. Yeah. Kind of thinking to myself, thank you so much, brothers and sisters who are out there right now holding space, so I can kind of fall apart and get through this. And 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 yeah. they've got that that warm place to come right back into or to to rejoin and connect with. It's it's such a beautiful feeling, and I I do feel that the I I I wish I could have attended your your session. I'd said <laughs> no, I, I, I'm like, she never comes to Sedona and I happen to go to, well, Hawaii, a fabulous place to go. Um, but, but that being said, the, the unity meditations, the hanging out with friends and having, Hey, let's meditate instead of just sit around and shoot the expletive. <laughs> um, you know, I find is so important primarily because a lot of this inner work and this meditation and interdimensional work can make you feel almost ugh when you open your eyes and you look at the 3D, and I'm using air quotes. So really implementing something that is more of a fifth dimensional um, society in the way you want to see things, I feel like that's what that's what makes you like, yes, we're here, we're doing it. It's in my my open-eyed reality and my closed-eyed reality. And, it, you know, it's I, I feel that that is why maybe that calling is so important right now to match that physical, what you're really seeing and what you're experiencing and have it all just much more fluid coming in a little bit easier. So yeah. thank you for doing that. And I, I don't know if you have plans to ever come back <laughs> to Sedona again and hold it, but let me know. <laughs> I won't go to Hawaii that time. <laughs> well, just kind of, again, it was like that 5D thing, right? I came was like Monday morning, yes. and all of a sudden you receive, okay, we're going to have to have a gathering, you know, because a, a couple, you know, five people had written me saying, can we get together, come to my house, come over here, let's go for a hike or whatever, and I was like, gathering, okay, and just like woke up, okay, mm. we're going to the Sedona Creative Life Center, let's we'll see if they have a space, and within, you know, less than a week, the event was over, you know, it's just like, boom, oh, it just happens, Yeah, you know, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, but and that, that kind of... Um, that kind of the when it comes to kind of coming out of your meditations or whatever, and viewing uh, the outside world, just a reminder to everyone: the 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 beingness of non-judgment mm-hmm. again is so healing. Yes, because you have this cosmic perspective and so much compassion, not pity, mm. but compassion mm-hmm. for everything that's happening. And when you have that higher perspective, you realize: okay, we're just this is. Yes, it's just a game, but there's also um, the realization that the presence has come back. Mm-hmm. You know that that Christed presence and the divine feminine and all of that is really infusing our consciousness in this now moment, mm-hmm. and to stay in this the state of gratitude yes. for everything, yes. and where everybody is in their process and everything. There's like, okay, okay, I, I see that you know maybe the work is not done yet. <laughs> There's no conclusion, um, you know. For a lot of people, they're like, "I am not feeling closure <laughs> on my journey." Yes, you know. And it's like, well, you want to demonstrate what it is like to feel closure, and and also um, explain to people that it's not escapism. Yes, you know, so it's like the yes, you did your of job, that. you're doing your job, you're doing the embodiment and everything, and it's not embodiment for the purpose of okay, smell you later, you know, I'm <laughs> going over to five D New Earth and we'll see you when I see you, you know, it's not like that. Mm-mm. It's just the state of absolute presence, and and not only that, but we're 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 also finishing up all of this, you know, prediction and prediction and prediction and everything yes. like that. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> Enough already. I know people ask me a lot just because when you when you have access to the cosmic dialogue, mm-hmm. you know, the galactic thing, people are like, what are they saying? What's next? What's next? You know, and you can 
you can talk about it to a certain level. Yeah. But there's um, there has always been this uh, consistent um, message from from my own guides of you know what you can share and what you can't share. Mm-hmm. How will it be interpreted? And if it can be misinterpreted at all, don't say it. Right. You know, so there's so much that has been held back. And now I feel like, can we just share everything, even the poetry and the weird metaphors mm. and all these different experiences, you know? So that's something that I would like to migrate into with my work because there's so many people now um, doing ascension guidance and things like that. Yeah. They're, you know, they're they're kind of stepping. We're kind of ba- passing the batons, you know, as we yes, go. We're yes. like, okay, now you take care of that. I'm gonna go over here. Yes, you know. And as you get more and more into this present state, this beautiful state, which is so consistent, you know. And and believe me, I I can't believe that it's a, a consistent part of my experience. You know, for so long it was like on and off, on and off, on and off. And then, you know, you felt good, you felt good, you felt gratitude all the time, you felt blessed all the time. And then it's now it's turning into this next thing where it's like this lock-in through the heart. And you're, it's, it's amazing to me. Thank it's amazing you. to yeah. me that this is happening to so many of us. You know, and I hear from my brothers and sisters who write or even at the, at the gathering, we were in so 5D, I'm like, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. And everyone <laughs> just laughed and smiled they're like thank you for being like so present with us Mm -hmm. and honest about the experience of like I'm going to allow my higher self to just take over yes and when you keep commanding that through your ascension process constantly higher self take over take over take Mm -hmm. over take over just letting your lower self that, that whole lower reality just yeah. drop away mm-hmm. and be complete. You know, do all your processing, and then you get to the level where you're like, you guys just take over. You're <laughs> there all the time anyway. <laughs> you know, just let's just be this thing now. Yes. And there were all these cosmic factors that came into play this year mm. that allowed for that. And now we have this timeline bifurcation, which when it, it sounds scary to some people you're like am I gonna make it or whatever yeah it feels like a bus that's moving through and you're like I want to make sure I can catch the bus catch the bus you know and again it's that choice of love over everything else Mm -hmm. you know that has to be your predominant experience your predominant choice yeah is love and that's how any of us you know, got on that train to begin with. Yes. You know, and and I saw it actually the the representative uh, representation of it when it, that information came in in December when I get all the gateways and stuff of what's going to unfold throughout the year was these big DNA spirals dividing. Oh. And it looked like train tracks too. And I was mm-hmm. like, uh, I'm like, what is that? They're like division of worlds, timeline split. And I was like, the, 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 the oh. this year? You know? like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, like, that was, Division of Worlds was kind of put on the back burner so that we could have all these other experiences and do all these other things. Yes. Because we're actually changing the big architecturals for how this could unfold. Mm-hmm. Because so many of us had overshot the mark in 2012. And oh, yeah. So many, yeah. I mean, you know, my, my galactic levels were like, oh, you guys are way ahead of where you were. We're like, how come the lower reality doesn't look like that? Well, they're like, don't worry, we're going to play catch up. Mm. You know, so we've got five years of this catch up thing. Yeah. And now, um, because we kind of overshot the mark and now we actually get the experience of the full Christ and embodiment. Mm. And then we take everybody, you know, as many willing hearts again, yeah. just be willing to open your life to the experience of love all the time yeah, and pay attention to where you're steering your consciousness. Yes. It's a moment by moment thing, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, and you can obviously, there's so much information out there about retraining your thoughts and everything, but yeah. retraining your heart yes. is huge. Yeah. You know? It's like, yeah, you can change the neural pathways and the thoughts fire in different directions. That's beautiful. Right. But when you retrain your heart constant, you know, through that constant decision making of like in this now moment mm, what am I feeling yes. pay attention to what you're feeling mm-hmm. and you easily redirect it you're like nope not doing that anymore okay mm-hmm. over here over here over here and then the the brain kind of works in tandem with the heart mm-hmm. but the heart intelligence is so present with this new thing that's happening to the light tribe right now yeah 
it's like, wow, you're just turning into a, a big heart generator of this of source. You know, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. Again, it's incredible to me because if you it's... feel it, like, just rewriting everything. Yeah. You know? Well, I, I mean, for people, who, I think also it's, it's noteworthy for empaths or people who maybe are feeling things that aren't their own. What's a good way that you feel to discern? Maybe this is oh, something collectively I'm, I'm painting my way through. I'm, I'm clearing out. Or maybe it's something through the... I had a full-blown cry session over the planet. And so it was like, you know, just everything that we had done to her and just... Whew, and man, it felt yeah. so good afterwards, I tell you. It felt it really good to... Release it, cry. Yeah. But, you know? but yeah. sometimes it's not so easy to discern what is yours and maybe what you're just tapping into on... This is interesting because in in the dualistic model that we had through New Age, and, and trust me, I'm 52 now. I'm kind of a late... What? I didn't uh, know. Oh my God. I'm kind of a late first waiver. But 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 I do have like a lot of that classic, like if Dolores Cannon used to describe Dolores first Cannon, exa- waivers. Yes. You know, she's like, no kids, no attachments. You don't want the karma. <laughs> you understand you're here for a mission. I'm like, well, yeah, okay. Yeah, get in and get out. out. <laughs> you know? But I also have some of that second waiver mission stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, first waivers were like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing here. You know, second waivers. She, the way Dolores used to, you know, God bless her, yeah. used to define those those categories, you know, and now we're just kind of mishmashing them all together. Yeah. But but understand, for for those of you who are, you know, indigos and even their diamond, the crystal tribe, you know, and everything kind of coming up and through the ranks, um, understand that the things, the the even the belief systems of oh, that somebody else's is not mine, or I am processing for so many people or whatever. We've been talking about that for decades, yes. so understand that has been part of the game for a long time. Yes. You don't have to do that anymore if you want to make a conscious choice um, and and perhaps not blame you know, unity consciousness for the way that you're feeling, you know, because it is yeah. an aspect of unity consciousness as we all reconnect the dots of the fractals. Yes. You're going to start feeling... Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. You know, good, bad, ugly, everything. <laughs> so it's, and it's not uh, from this state of, of um, That's yours. love, beingness, oh. this hard intelligence. Right. You are not affected by it any longer. Mm-hmm. You just, you're like, okay, that, that exists, that exists. It feels very avatar-like, I guess, mm-hmm. oh, in this yes. state. You mm-hmm. know, it's, um, and this is something that has just clicked in with, really with the eclipse, we started getting these very bizarre experiences, especially gatekeepers back in May, mm. with the timeline division starting to be, you know, we're, we were pulling in these primary timelines and dropping lower realities. So all of a sudden oh. there was like no foundation for a lot of people. And they went through all this trauma mm-hmm. of like, whoa, I was totally tethered yes. to this reality that just dropped off, yep. you know, and, and you can see that, you know, yes. there's a lot of flailing going on because the platform for people's realities are dropping away, and that's going to continue. We're kind of shaving off the bottom. Yeah, you know, it's like drop a lower reality, drop the lower reality, with as much ease and grace as possible. You yes, because we don't want people to get, you know, too crazy or psychotic or anything like that. It, yeah, but it, but you can feel um, the the sensation is very avatar like, because you're you're already technically you're already you know in that higher self state you know higher self is like yeah we're, we're going to be experiencing more because the primary timelines came into play mm. so you start experiencing more of that higher timeline that takes you to that new earth experience you kind of ride it you know it it actually crosses uh dimensions mm. it's not something that is owned by a third or fourth dimension it's actually traverses dimensions wow. so you kind of ride the experience of embodiment into that that higher new earth vibration mm. So it makes your presence here feel very avatar-like. Yes. You're like, well, yeah, so I'm just kind of here, but it's kind of a representation (laughs) because it's still doing good, I guess. I don't know. It's like like a projecting in type of sensation. like um, Very aware of that. Yeah. And there's all these theories of holographic realities and everything like Mm -hmm. that, which is just talk Mm -hmm. and theories and everything. But once you have the experience, you're like, oh, okay. So now how do we shift the holograms? You know, right. that's what we're getting into. Yeah. Because by so many people embodying, you mm-hmm. can feel the uh, the power in that, mm-hmm. the divine power in that, because you're surrendering to divine will. And if divine will says, 
this is no more, we're like, okay, call it forth, this is no more. Mm-hmm. And all those lower realities, lower timelines, yeah. dropping, dropping, yeah. dropping. And the bifurcation happens between primary and secondary. So it's like very high vibe experience and then the old stuff that eventually does not exist. Yeah. You know, this the the way that we experience the planet now, this density is yeah. not going to carry on for mm-hmm. another thousand years. It's not happening. No. I mean you could feel the end of history and her story coming to a close. Yeah. Like it's not going to just go on and on and on. Mm-hmm. And it's not gonna happen. Yeah. And I feel that people when they have a sense of that, that's where this kind of um you know, if you're barely awake or not awake, they feel that anxiety. Yes. You can feel that kind of collective anxiety. Oh, and yes, there's palpable. a lot of yeah. star seeds that are transmuting that, you mm-hmm. know, willing to do that. But you don't have to carry it in your own field. Right. Send it back to source. You know, the, go, here, here you go. Here you go, brother. <laughs> you know, this, this, here you go, sister. That's it. You know? Yes. And, and, you know, process it and let it go as quickly as possible. You know, yeah. it should be... You know, within a day or so, yeah, you should be back to back to balance. That's the other thing is the balancing act um, is also much easier to attain. You know, you don't swing for five weeks in one direction and, and a month yeah. in the other. You know, it's like getting very, very uh, accelerated right. with the balancing act too. Yeah. yeah. I thank you so much for touching on that because mm-hmm. I receive a lot of messages from people and I feel so disconnected now being in Sedona. I feel very protected and in kind of a, a bubble here. But in the denser areas, I remember it feeling very, almost you like you mentioned, that anxiety feeling. And then also as things are accelerating, almost a, a detachment from whatever you identified yourself as. Mm-hmm. In that, that the third dimension and it being right. very, I get messages of people just very confused and I feel like a sense of like a, a dire sense of like, oh God, please tell me what's going on or please tell me something right. encouraging. And so thank you because what you have going on now that you're, that you're saying you're experiencing the Christ at heart kind of always in there and always that to me shows us that's where we're headed. That's mm-hmm. the light at the end of the tunnel. And if you just continue to ebb and flow and release, like you yeah. said, I love that. I picture like a little, those old, what are those old school like mail shoots? <laughs> just like, <laughs> <bloop>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like right up to source. And you're like, cool, put a little bow, a little kiss on it, send it up. And like those like, bank tubes? Remember that's what it is. Like that's what I'm thinking of the bank yeah. tubes. I can't believe we used to do that stuff. It's know, so funny. Fun? We're actually going so fast. We feel like we're not, but it's like, mm-hmm. sometimes we maybe feel like we're not, but we're actually moving and processing and expanding so much faster than I think we maybe give ourselves yeah. credit for. Absolutely. So, hey. Absolutely. <laughs> I have gratitude that it is accelerating. And and the other thing is, you know, don't get too frustrated with what other people have, you know, they, with the external reality yeah. has... Um, you know, to provide for most of the collective, you know, most of the collective is getting fed um, nonsense, you know, you're like, okay, there's that, but that doesn't have to be your experience, Mm -hmm. and you don't have to have this laborious mourning over the old realities as they die away, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, don't, I always say, don't watch it burn. (laughs) <laughs> just create a new thing yeah. you know because the more people that we have uh, vibing with the higher timeline of creating the next thing the easier it will be for everyone to to cross to cross and you know hold hands and join in on that exactly. yeah exactly and you do have to become that representation that way shower mm-hmm. wherever you are mm-hmm. and it can be the simplest of things you know, everyday kindness is beautiful. Yeah. You know, just walk around beaming everybody. Mm-hmm. You see something ugly, bless it. Yeah. You know, Love you that. see people having a hard time, pray for them, meditate for them. Yes. You know, anything that, and it is spiritual practice is called so for a reason. Mm-hmm. It's consistency. Mm-hmm. And after you practice and after you engage with those practices, it becomes a no-brainer. Yes. You know, your heart just turns on <laughs> you know, it exactly on you blink you, you know, yes it just turns on, on. Mm-hmm. and when it's on and it'll be on off on off on off and all of a sudden you're like oh my gosh i got there it's just on it's just on <laughs> and the, those other things just um 
don't bother you. It's not that they are that we don't have compassion. You have compassion, but you choose. What's your skill set? How can you help? Mm-hmm. And you go for it. Yeah. You know, you don't fret over what people are doing or what people are saying or what people are experiencing. Yeah. You go, okay, what's my piece of the puzzle? Yeah. Because we all place the last piece together. Mm-hmm. You know, so you figure out what are what are my skills? Yes. What do I have to offer? You create that at the same time that you're doing all your clearing and your emotional work and your mm-hmm. inner work mm-hmm. so that you you don't wait to be, you know, perfect before you start engaging with service. <laughs> because it doesn't work that way. Yes. The service will teach you. You learn so much when you teach. Yes. So the minute that you step into, okay, here's what I have to offer. And you offer that with humility. Mm-hmm. You have to be humble. Mm-hmm. Don't be a braggart or one of those old school new age right. like guru types. Forget it. Yeah. We're done yeah. with that. I mean, some people still appreciate that kind of stuff, but you can see like it's migrating in a whole different direction right yes. now. Um, multidimensional leadership, yeah. You need people to step up and go, let's get together. Yes. Let's all do this, you know, that kind of thing. <clears throat> but um, but treat it with uh, honor and respect, you mm-hmm. know, truly looking at other people and going, I honor and respect everything that you are, really understanding that they are just... Of you know your a fractal right. you yes you know it's the same thing and then you get into this divine reflection sacred mirror yeah. aspect where you start showing people the highest thing within them that yes you know you watch people just kind of melt around you because you're not judging them yes at all oh. you know there's no more of that mirroring your emotions oh. and everything you get clear and all of a sudden people just are like, oh, I don't know why I'm listening to you, but I'm listening to you. <laughs> or, I don't know why. You know, I went to Montezuma as well. Oh, you did? Uh, Good. Yeah, a couple days ago. Good. And I sat down to meditate, and when I opened my eyes, all these people were meditating with me. No kidding! They were like, sisters and brothers just came down. I was at the source, you know, down <gasps> where the stream comes yes. out. Yes, yeah. And uh, in the shade and everything. And I, I just sat down in a little blanket. I sat on the wall. I meditated. And all, I w- opened my eyes, and there were all these other people meditating. Oh, my like, gosh. I love to this. do is, like, give people permission to do what they actually want to do yes. anyway. You know, way showing can be really easy. It's like... When people are just like too much in their mind or whatever, mm-hmm. you pick up a flute, you start playing, it's all true. of a sudden everyone's in the zone. That's you know? like, it's always like dance parties too. You're always like, exactly. just get, no one wants to be the first one. And then finally someone's the first one. And you're like, hey, yeah. thank God I've been dying to dance. Yeah. I've been living to give dance. permission for people to be their, their highest, highest self. Yeah. You know, and we're just like, way showers are just snow plows. You're getting the big stuff out of the way so people can sail through behind you yeah. easier. You oh. know, and you could you see that happening. It's beautiful. Oh, I love it. That is such a cool story <laughs> to open your eyes yeah. and have that happening I around know. you. And, and what like, there proof were some strong again? Sisters there too. I was like, hey, wow. wow. They just and these were up. just random people. Like random these people. were not wow. Yeah, there was a couple from Germany. You know, men and wow. women. I love there were a couple this. sisters that were from Arizona. Oh my gosh, I, I love was, that so much. Yeah, so much. I was like, this is great. <laughs> you know, so you kind of feel like that heart magnet. You yes. know, it's like if I just do this. I mean, I'm not. Um, shy about meditating in public or playing my singing bowl or playing my flute or drum or whatever but every time I do people are like thank you thank you thank you and it's so cool because it's so easy yeah just be kind yes you know just just show people oh remember the other reality you know it's constantly reminding people remember there's this other thing there's it yes yeah oh god bless that whole (laughs) <laughs> situation right there and that that visual that you've given me because it's so true it's like you could be looking at the commercial and just ugh, ugh. You could be and then you look e- e- take your pictures of the water or right it's yes. like, or, uh, or you can look there. around you see yeah. sandra walter meditating you're like wait a second that's an option yeah, <laughs> and just, for all of us it's such a i see yes. that a lot in shasta you know shasta there's a lot of people who have ceremony or they're meditating or whatever don't just walk by them, you know, blabbing on your iPhone or talking to your friend. Right. Stop and honor people. This, yes. You know, meditate with them. Yes. Join their ceremony. Ask, you know, ask, can I, I join your that. ceremony? Of course, they're going to say yes. But don't just, you know, pretend as if that's their what they're doing. Yeah. You know, if you're truly a light worker, okay. you're going to you're going to be connecting with people mm-hmm. in a much stronger and heart based way as yeah. this stuff unfolds. So 
join in. Yeah. You know, don't just walk by. If it, you know, if you're in a tour group, don't just walk by another mm-hmm. group of people who are meditating, like blabbing about where you're going to have lunch or something. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. like pay attention, people. Yes. You know, they, like you got to walk to the talk. Yeah. You know, yeah. definitely. Well, I'm glad that you brought up Mount Shasta because I do want to touch on that just a little bit because it is such a special place. Yeah. And um, how long have you been living in five Mount years? Ch- five years. Oh, happy five anniversary! Years. Wow, oh wow. <laughs> wow. And I know it's it's known or it's said to have a city that exists mm. underground. <laughs> and I know that you've also you've um, spent a lot of quiet time camping and really have probably had some interesting experiences. And I'm wondering if you, what kind of contact you've had with other beings and have the Agarthans ever come to visit or, or give a message? And would you share that with us? Yeah. When I first got to Mount Shasta in, in 2012, I actually had to pull off the road as I got close to it. Wow. I got totally nauseous. I entered her field and I looked at the mountain and all of a sudden I got this huge rush of information of like, what I was there to do. I didn't know what I was there to do. <gasps> there were all this rush and all this information flashes of like what was going to happen to Mount Shasta. And I had to pull off the road. And I was like, no, I'm not doing <laughs> it. I'm no. not doing it. Find somebody else. Find oh, somebody else. And I was like, here we go. You know? oh. And I was like, oh my God. I was <laughs> meltdown. So I pulled into town and everything. And the first thing that I noticed in early 2012, I got there in uh, May of 2012, was uh, there were all these like master presence and beings and ETs and like it was a zoo. <laughs> I, was, I was just like, and it it just it it dissipated after 2012. Oh, it everything you know it was like everything was there to like you know gain access to that portal and yeah. sort out their own like where who's going where and everything like that. And it gets that way every once in a while. Oh. All these beings show up and they're kind of like in panic mode because there's about to be a timeline shift or a reality mm. shift or a cosmic trigger or something. And everybody, like all the councils are going, who's going where? Who's doing what? Uh, what about us? You know, they're all like mission control. Like we're in <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, but that did calm down quite a bit after 2012 and 2013. Mm. And for a while, um, you know, we have extensive light ship activity. Um, I am somebody who's experienced flying in and out of the mountain in lucid dream state and oh. stuff like that. So there's been a lot of contact for me. Okay. Um, and a lot of light ship interaction. And a lot of, I've seen light ships come and go out of the mountain and right next to my campsite and very bizarre light bands and wow. flashes and different beings and beings that walk without making footsteps on the ground. Mm. You know, they like make, they, they, they you hear the sound of footsteps, but they're not actually stepping on the ground. Oh, okay. Very, um, and to me, that's more of an inner earth um, mm-hmm. type being. There's, there's, you know, the legend of Telos and the yes. inner, I'm going to shock everybody right now. I actually <laughs> do not believe in Telos. <laughs> um, and the reason why is because in uh, 2014... I think it was 2014. Uh, I had this experience. I was I was up um, I was up on Shasta. I was camping. It was full moon, and I was like, "Are we done here yet?" <laughs> like I'm up here by myself. It's cold. I'm in a hammock, you know. And I was like, "Are we done here yet?" And all these, you know, I have a very large team, and they all, you know, they start laughing. They're like, "You live here." <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, I live here. It's like the most challenging place, you know, for for somebody who's always lived by water and I've never been a mountain person or whatever. You're so remote and everything. And it's such a small town. Yeah. And I come from like Chicago and, you know. Right. Nothing I'm sure is convenient to get, you know, as far as daily. It's just, you know, you live a very simple life, but it was just very challenging. And, you know, the tribe coming and going all the time and light workers and all the belief systems. I was like, oh, are we done yet? You know? And they're like, you live here. And I laughed. I said, yeah, the most challenging place I've ever lived. And they're like, no, no, no. You live here. And then all of a sudden, like, part of the mountain opens up. And I see all of these holographic templates that are implanted into the mountain. And they, some of them appear as, like, crystal cities. You know, some of them appear as, like, an, a, a, as towns, you know, as, like, villages and stuff like that. And I was like, well, what, what is that? It's not actually where people are living. And they're like, no, these are, this is uh, intentions from the future 
that oh. were placed there in ancient days, you know, for safekeeping of all of these realities of peaceful realities and oh. uh, harmonious ways of living and everything. So it was like the intention, this Lemurian intention yes. that was placed in the mountain and all these different holographic templates that it's also, and it's not just Lemurians, it was uh, Syrian influence, Venusian influence, Pleiadian, like all these different, you know, star families are like, okay, if we get to that point where if Gaia reaches a certain level, we can start revealing, you know, how to live, oh. how to be and everything. And uh, it's really interesting because I received this, and there was so much of that download about what was going on, but uh, I received that and literally... And I was like, wow, I can't talk about this. Because <laughs> the belief system is so it's strong. strong. Yeah. People are like journeying to tell us and everything, you know, and nobody's gone there physically. It's just, mm. you know, this, they guide you through a, a guided meditation or whatever and go, okay, now we're going to tell us, you know, and it's like, what do you experience? Well, yeah. it could be anything. It's whatever the person's consciousness d- is desiring to experience. Right. You know, you can just like end up tapping into a mastery level or mastery realm. Mm. You know, you receive whatever it is you're 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 asking for. You get information back. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. And I was like, wow, I can't talk about this. People have entire businesses in Mount Shasta based, based on, on telos. telos you know? wow. So I'm like, okay, I'm just not going to talk about it. Keep the peace or whatever. <laughs> and also understand that I have I just have a different point of view. Right. You know, it to, to my consciousness, but nobody's ever taken me to a city called Telos. Inner Earth civilizations, yes, absolutely. Mm. I do do not know if the inner Earth civilizations that I've encountered or the inner Earth beings that I've seen that are blatantly like a Lemurian type um, representation uh, mm. that look very much like us, but they're wearing you know flowing white robes or sometimes kind of jumpsuity, more space you know ga- galactic right. looking. Um, uh, I I don't know if they actually live in the mountain. I would never make that assumption, and they've never said we're from Telos. Right. Or we live in the mountain. They've never said that. You know, to me, it just doesn't it doesn't make linear sense. Right. Um, but it was interesting because after I had that this revelation and this download right. and everything, five days later later, um, Cryon came to Mount Shasta, Lee mm. Carroll, and uh, and he's one of the few channels that. Um, that I hear every once in a while, you know, where it's just like, hey, you should listen to, you know, listen to what li- what Brian <laughs> said. And I was like, what? So, but they were in Mount Shasta, and it was really interesting because he opened his whole event by calling the dead, now deceased, Aurelia Louise Jones, who actually channeled the original Telos material. Oh. He's like, Aurelia, come sit at my feet. Oh. He's like, thank you for the work that you did. He's like, in the old light, it looked like a city. And I was like, Whoa. thank you. <laughs> I was like, got goosebumps just thinking about it. But I was oh. like, thank you, thank you. Because I know that our, and again, no judgment on that level Theory, of consciousness right? or that perception. But I do feel that our perception is changing. Mm-hmm. That in, because I've, I've seen and ran through the crystalline cities over the mountain. You know, wow. that was a big experience for me. You know, I ran like a kid with a day pass. Ah. Like, I see everything, you know. Because like, ah. I didn't know how long the experience would last. Yeah. You know? But it was definitely over. It was not in the mountain. It was over the mountain. So there's that level. You know, there's all these different creations because mm-hmm. it's a very powerful spot for creation. It's a very powerful vortex. Okay. So we have access to creating whatever you want. I've created things there too that people are like, I saw this giant octahedron. I'm like, oh yeah, I put that there. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. But it's uh, it, it's interesting to have this like new light. Pers- mm. We have to cast this new light on all of those belief systems and stories and creations and go, right. well, it was really cool when we thought it was like, like that. that. And right. now, dot, yes. dot, dot, you know. So just kind of bring it into... This, uh, this present and realize that, you know, all the messages for Telos are like classic ascended master right. teachings. Be good, be nice to each other. Don't eat animals, you right. know, all, all that <laughs> stuff, you know, be good. Yeah. Um, it's classic ascended master type material, classic ascension guidance. Right. So there's nothing wrong with it. 
We don't right. judge it at all. It's just the perception of people looking for physical doors into the mountain. You know, you're probably going to find a military base before you'll find <laughs> yeah. an inner earth city. Yeah. You know, it's like, no, right. we're not going to blow up the mountain just so you can satisfy your craving for Telos. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's just realizing that um, the, the mountain itself generates that pure vibration mm. of access to the divine feminine. That's why we call her Mother oh. Shasta, Mama Shasta. Oh, okay. It's because that um, it reminds you of your heart. You feel that heart energy when you go there. Mm-hmm. You might feel a lot of crown energy too because it opens up to your ascension columns. The whole plan is to merge all the chakras into the ascension columns yeah. so you can become something else. And the way that you project yourself into realities yeah. is different. You know, the classic chakra system is a way to project yourself into 3D. Mm-hmm. But it has no business in five. So, you know, we're all leveling up these yeah. systems and going, okay. So when you go to Mount Shasta, you do have those multidimensional experiences. Mm-hmm. You might see galactics if you're connected to a galactic level. You might see masters if you want to. The thing is now, those those benevolent templates and intentions and certainly every light worker who's come and placed crystals and stones and intentions mm. in the mountain it is a divine sacred mirror yeah so it gives you back exactly what you're taking to the mountain which is why you want to set your intention strongly just like here in Sedona mm-hmm. before you do any kind of you know ceremony or sacred work it's like what's my intention yeah you got to stay conscious yeah because otherwise it just throws back you know whatever it is you need to look at. Oh, yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Yes, yeah. I do. I've, I've told people Sedona should come with a bit of a warning sign. Yeah. <laughs> warning will amplify. So Magnetics. Exactly. Around you, the whole thing is made of iron and crystal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a big organ. Exactly. Organ I generate. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. It's so true. But, you know, Mount Shasta is such a mama Shasta. I'm going to call her that now, yeah. too. I don't, I don't know if she represents a certain chakra. People have asked me about that. Yeah, I think we need to throw the whole chakra. The, yeah, the, I mean, if anything, she behaves like a crown. You ooh, know? I've heard Bashar ooh. call her a crown too. Okay. I was like, yeah, yeah, it does. You know, as somebody who has a lot of head shaped things going on, <laughs> and crown openings going on, I'm like, yeah, I could feel the crown aspect the ca- definitely. Mm. I mean, I feel like the whole top of my head is gone, you know, at this <laughs> point, and perhaps that is a side effect of being, you know, in some place that would have got. Um, tagged as a crown chakra wow uh, it hasn't been a root chakra that's a really old belief system i don't know yeah how I don't, people feel that when they go there i don't feel root at all oh me one the one time i had been there and this was before i was very aware and awake i did not feel any roots i actually felt yeah. a lot of native american stuff that was there um but such serenity so it was definitely yeah. to me a higher yeah. vibe experience but I'm curious, do you think moving forward, what will happen to those lower chakras in, in the fifth dimension? Is, it, is that something we still take with us? Do they... Tr- no, like I don't have an experience like really from... Uh, from I get, you know, I feel... Yeah, I guess I still feel yeah. like heart center, high heart, throat on occasion, definitely third eyes blasted out <laughs> crown has like yeah. five levels now you know you've been going through this christed crown activation which is really interesting oh. so it actually it doesn't just open up a crown chakra but it's actually like this activation for dna for true human crystalline dna going on oh but it's symbolized in a crown you know it's like all this royalty stuff oh. you know the old stories of like yes. oh and then you receive your crown and the coronation and everything yeah it's just you know you're living the story so mm-hmm. it's when you get there you see like all these similarities between your journey and the kind of christed template journey of like you know buddha krishna yeshua you know all the masters yes. all, all the folks that came before us you kind of live the template and then you kind of transcend it and it's turning into something else now. Yeah. So the lower chakras are just kind of gone. Mm. You know? I mean, outside of solar That's plexus, a- below there just kind of feels gone. It just feels like this flow. Right. But there's definitely something going on higher. Mm. And yes. I'm not somebody who is going to label them as 12 or 25 chakras. I feel that those are just belief systems yeah. that we are transcending those as well. Mm. So it's like I, I teach ascension column, open up, just blast the whole thing open yes. because then you don't you can project your consciousness as a fully unified multidimensional consciousness yes. that kind of encapsulates all that you are through the heart center. Heart mm-hmm. center is definitely 
you know, the junction point, high heart, heart center, mm-hmm. you know, somewhere in there. It's definitely the junction point in your gateway back to source. Mm-hmm. And it also, um, this heart intelligence thing, there's a lot of information coming in and it does, it bypasses the mind mm-hmm. completely, mm-hmm. which is why expressing it is so difficult because you're like, well, there's really no words for it. Yeah. You know, people have attempted with light language to try to bypass people's right brain and right. ego, yes. you know, it's like, just listen, just feel it, right. which is brilliant. And right. it's, again, that's another phase of our awakening. You know, that yeah. was brought in through the first waivers. Mm-hmm. You know, and people were speaking light language right. on mushrooms and stuff, you know, back oh. in the 60s. And now it's like this popular thing. Right. Uh, because it gets the mind out of the way and gets people straight into the heart. You have to feel it. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people recalling the Murian light language mm-hmm. or Syrian light language, you know, just um, the they're interpreting the sensation of origin mm-hmm. or the last place they knew is home. Mm-hmm. You know, ideally home would be pure source consciousness. But a lot of us, you know, you visit here for a while and you're like, okay, I'm going to go back to Vega, you know, or whatever. <laughs> it's just, you know, a lot of Lyran energy coming through right. a lot of people because they're feeling that that uh, inception point for the human genome mm. you know they're feeling the encodements from those different star systems but also like the root of it you know the stuff that started in vega back in lyra you know that kind of origin story again yeah. it is it is part of the story mm-hmm. that that's part of your root or whatever if you're going to engage with a divine human crystalline consciousness you mm-hmm. know we're going to take and demonstrate what divine human existence is about we haven't even explored that yet yeah you know so that's that's exciting I, some yeah. people are like oh i'm bored with it i want to go back to Sirius or whatever it's like fine mm-hmm. you know you're done mm-hmm. but there are some of us who are like oh, i think we need to anchor this fully on the new earth and then then we can go visiting other places yes. you know it's like one step at a time one step at a time yeah that kind of thing <laughs> yeah oh okay that's I'm so, it's very activating sitting near you. So <laughs> you know, God, no, no, keep that light bright. Ooh, it's so so good, Sandra. I can't I can't thank you enough. I I'm just gonna touch on this um this card that came up because I felt it was so relevant, and then maybe just close out with what you feel is coming up. I know we just had the fall equinox, which was like right, of course, perfectly aligned, like right before the 23rd, and then. Yeah. All of like here we are at the Olympics, man. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce this card here that came out from this beautiful deck, which I found out is the only one that Sandra owns. Um, and I was called to it. It just it felt like you when I saw it. But this is the Mystic Art Medicine Oracle cards. Oh, and let's give ooh, a sh- let's give a yeah, I want to shout sister. exactly. This is from I want to say her name is Cheryl Lynn. Yeah. Sh- Sherlin. Sherlin. Me, Sher- I oh. found that in Sonoma mm-hmm. over at, at Choco Tree. Yes. Oh, it's a couple years ago. Oh, they used to great. have one on every table. They don't do that anymore, but they oh, used to have a deck on every table. And I was like, look at this art. Like, that's for a me, great idea. That's a 5D it so, restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like so creative. Oh. The, the deck is really beautiful. She does these massive paintings and then she shrinks them down into these cards and they all have these beautiful messages beautiful like i mean these are just it's a stunning stunning deck and i have to thank my friend jason who gifted this to me and i think he's a friend of sherlyn and it's just you have to go out and get this you just have to because the cards itself to just look at them and then let alone start reading what they all mean my gosh so when i asked for today was the the message that our listeners needed to hear and this what came out was core healing which is, I know, a lot of the work that we've been doing. And I'll just read a little blurb here. Um, Trauma is trauma, no matter the circumstance. Your inner child who experienced trauma has been ignored, denied, and misunderstood, now demands healing. Bringing these into awareness is how you can deal with the effect past events are having on you now, in the present moment. Core healing marks a new beginning. The cycle where peace and harmony reunite awareness to what prophets call bringing forth that which is already within you. It is accomplished through a mystical alchemy of surrendering into forgiveness for all things done by and to you. It is the final falling away of the mask. Here, healing the wounds of the inner child are addressed. So very, very relevant. I can't wait to post this picture um, so you can all just... 
googly eye over it. Yeah. It's so stunning. It's gorgeous. And I love and that deck because it's, you know, before you before you read the book or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. you're just like, well, let's just see. What what are some things I can focus on today? Yes. Just like throw three cards down or whatever. Yes. Yeah, I used to do that pretty you, consistently. I haven't done it in a while. So I'm glad that you brought a, up the deck. I'm like, oh, yeah, the good, deck. Good, good. Um, and I actually have them with me, which is odd. Well. But, uh, <laughs> but I always, you know, I, I put them down on like, well, what, what do I feel in my heart you mm-hmm. know, before you open the book? Yeah. What do I feel in my heart about what this is showing me? Yes. And sometimes I'll I'll throw down cards and I'll be like, nope, I'm sorry, you got it wrong. That's oh, not what I'm feeling. Oh. And I'll, I, I'm in charge of my my uh, my destiny. No, I love that because you know? I've done that. And then I'm like, maybe that's me just not surrendering. You know, again, the kind of discernment, getting your discernment in, in alignment. And I love that you're just like, yeah, nope. I'm like, come on, guidance, we can do better. We, you know? <laughs> we can do better. That's you know? a quote I say a lot. Yes. Like, oh, yeah, that's what it is. Like, okay, that's definitely something I have to look at or that's what I have to feel or whatever. And that's, yes. it's, uh, you know, a, a deck like that is um it's just so much more creative yes you know if if our intention is to move into being true creator beings right you really have to expand beyond the limits what, of mm-hmm. stories of the tarot or whatever yes you know, it's still helpful for a lot of people but it's like don't let it direct your life why would you do exactly that? don't let it you put a, a ceiling uh you know a cap on where this could actually yeah. take you in your own unique way yeah but the, you're so right, especially with this deck. It's something that you can look at, and I think will have so many meanings and messages for you just visually. Just to play Be, with it. Yeah. You know, just play with it. Don't take it so seriously, you mm-hmm. know? And and when they're talking about um, core healing and forgiveness, that's huge <laughs> for a lot of people. Yes. You know, you can't go anywhere without that. Yeah. You know, there has to be that embracing all that is and going... Okay, do I fully comprehend that all all of this has purpose? Yeah. And had meaning for some higher yes. being and understanding that, you know, you don't know all of your soul's intentions. Right. It's great to stay innocent as the card recommends. Yes. You know, the, the innocence child. is key. It's not just goofing around playing, avoiding responsibility. Right. It's um because you do want to be conscious, you know, you don't, we, we've definitely been treated like children uh, for quite a long time, <laughs> you know, so to the point where, you know, people are getting into neoteny, you know, they're adult children. Mm-hmm. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the innocence that doesn't judge, that doesn't right. make up its hardcore mind, this is the truth. Right. You have to be so flexible right now because yes. it's changing. Oh. Yes. You know, on a global level, everything that we thought was true is probably going to get flipped upside down, right. and inspected, and be like, oh, well, that was cool. But to have the forgiveness of like, well, you know, not feel betrayed, yes. I guess, yes. or, or, you know, uh, bamboozled by <laughs> the old realities, you know, it's like, don't, don't keep a grudge, just laugh at it and be like, whoa, you really got me. Okay, I'm going to go over here. <laughs> you know, the thing is to keep moving forward. Yes. Because if you hold a grudge and you don't have forgiveness, right. you will stay there. Mm-hmm. And then you get to watch all your brothers and sisters go somewhere else and you'll you'll be like, oh, yeah. I missed that train. Exactly. You know? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I keep getting that train and bus visual too. I'm just like, I know. All right, of us just for years. Oh, I just yeah. want to, and I'm like, I want to make sure I jump on it and I get on it. And I'm like, well, it feels really good. I don't know. I'm holding this like, and it's like a magical train and there's so just many the experience. Is, yes. Just to have the yes. experience. You know, it's not like, oh, I have to stay behind and help everybody. It's like, yeah, help everybody. But at some point in your journey, you're going to be like, hmm, really want to see the inside of that train. Really mm-hmm. want to know where that train is going. Yeah. Yeah. And I want I just want to mention too that um brother Alexander Mazone had always suggested to look at the very bottom card of the deck so your whole pile there right of the cards that didn't apply but you look at the bottom and it's like the the overall kind of theme oh, that's so I wanted to mention that on this when I flipped it over it happened to be gratitude yes. so gratitude mm-hmm. will be a huge service or help to the core healing which da da again we kind of we already know, but it's yeah. great that we have the the cards to confirm things yeah. for us, and and that brings you so into this presence, this present moment now, yes. this this absolute now time that yes. we're experiencing. 
uh, the gratitude just expands it. You know, it's like oh. the more you go into the heart, the more your energy fields expand. Yes. You know, it's just, we talk about expansion, but it's actually the more that you resonate with that zero point source point in the heart, mm -hmm. the more that your energy fields just go bazoom, you know, like really fly out. Yes. And it's, it's so beautiful because there's, there's such a, um, a stillness or that unwavering thing mm -hmm. that um, is generated through gratitude. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just like, wow, I'm so glad. Even if it's absolutely mundane to your mind, and to your heart, yes. your heart is like, yay, yes. you get to play in this reality for just a little bit longer. You okay. know, just really be grateful, especially when you get to the point where you have that more cosmic perspective of being free, you know, like, oh, I got there. Mm -hmm. I'm free from my own nonsense. Right. And now I can start experiencing life as my higher self. And then you're constantly just beaming everything, you know, and treating everything as consciousness. Right. Everything, even the material things around you, everything's consciousness. Yes. You know, it's all been created by the collective. Right. So it's gratitude for everything. Yeah. And the stuff that you're done with, you're just done with. Mm -hmm. You know, don't judge it. Just be like, mm, okay, now I'm going to let that go. Let yeah. It go. So yummy. Well, we had the, like I said, the equinox and the September 23rd alignment. So to close out for our listeners, what do you feel or what have you heard maybe that is kind of coming up next, just energetically? What can we expect to feel? We're moving into, I, I tend to feel fall is very kind of nostalgic and there's a warm and fuzzy kind of cozy thing. And um, what, are, what are you getting in that regard? Well, I, in in the beginning of the year, you know, they always lay out all these gateways. And there was, well, you know, every month it was like a couple of sections where things were going to happen and everything like that. And the interesting thing about this year, what's so unique, is there was nothing between September 23rd and December 23rd. They're connected. Oh. So we actually, you know, with the opening of that, the, we call that a cosmic trigger, but that gateway that happened on the 23rd with the alignment that opens up this huge passage for this new experience. And it just, you know, it is amplifying <laughs> whatever you have going on, which is like a, the norm for the shift. Mm -hmm. But now um, for, for the Wayshower tribe, mm -hmm. you know, and I can only speak from that point of view. Right. Um, for the Wayshower tribe, we're getting into a, uh, a very um, amplified intensified experience mm. of this absolute presence so that we can actually open the gateways to new earth so okay. we're actually anchoring that through the collective consciousness but um there's there's going to be some very bizarre things happening with mm. our consciousness and it is consciousness based you know i i make no predictions about what it's going to look like to the external world right because we're leaving that reality so it's just like oh whatever happens there happens there but right. we're kind of building this bridge to the new oh, earth right. so like okay we need to anchor it through the collective consciousness mm -hmm. before we're going anywhere right you know kind of thing and uh and admittedly it is the strangest thing to claim that people are going to you know phase out of your reality but, um, <laughs> i know it's it is what it is right you know when you start having that very palpable sense of like this whole th I, I could just walk right out of here. This is, you know, you can feel it. Uh, we've had items go just go missing, like truly just. Yeah. Where did that item go? You know, and it's been like kind of metaphoric or subtle. Yeah. This timeline split where yeah. it's like, oh, you feel people and family mm -hmm. dropping away. You know, the job goes, the house goes, you know. Yeah. Now we're having these collective things where there's like hurricane. And people are like, oh, my God, the elementals. It's like, well, yeah, yeah. all this stuff is activating and the sun's going off. So. Yeah, and we just had this huge eclipse. So yeah, you know, there's going to be a reaction, right, right? But also look at what that does to all those people. They went through in the space of a, just a couple of days what we go through in our awakening process mm -hmm. over a couple of years. Yeah, you lost your job, you lost your house, you it's lost true. everything, it's... and you have to start and rebuild from scratch and yeah. look at your life and appreciate your neighbors and get together and work together. Oh. I mean, look at it from that perspective. It's yes. like this huge amplification of like, wake up, you know, okay, yeah. let's take this giant swath of Texas, Florida, you know, the coast or whatever. Yeah. And it's just, it's just acceleration. Yes. You know, I see it as a reflection, even the, the all the fires that we're having in, in Oregon and up in the, the Pacific Northwest, 
huge, I mean, huge acres and acres, I mean, hundreds of thousands of acres burned. Mm. And I just see it as alchemy, whether it's water or fire or earthquake or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just the alchemization that's happening right now. Yeah. Of this acceleration. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, if you're looking to the external for validation of something that should be occurring within, mm-hmm. you're looking in the wrong place. Right. You know, it's just the, the reflection of the alchemy of the collective consciousness and Gaia, yeah. you know, and it's just represented in a fractal way yeah. in your external reality. Yeah, it's kind. Of, it's unbelievable. Do you th- do you think that there will be some more kind of shaking and quaking? And it's bound to it's, occur. Yeah, it's bound to occur. Like That's how it, the, it doesn't surprise me anymore that it's yeah. happening all over different areas in different ways. Just like yeah. a, I mean, the councils that I belong to never talk about um, financial shifts or anything like that. That's just like not part of our agenda. Mm-hmm. But. Um, but they have shared that the the experience, you know, to focus on the experience, because the experience is going to get really off the charts for a lot of people. So mm. it was just like, just focus on that. Yeah. Focus on bringing in that, and let that lower reality oh, right. go. But it's it's always the intention to carry it forward with as as much ease and grace as possible. Mm -hmm. But we also don't want to step down the frequencies anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had this earth-facing quiet thing going on with the sun where it's like, "Mm, let's just shield, 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 shield. And we're done with that. You know, they said by the end of the year, they won't be able to do that. We're actually entering an area of space that's so amplified as so much pure dense photonic activity wow that it act, that's the dimensional shifting consciousness shifting stuff mm. that makes the sun go off and makes the realities change and everything mm. like that um but there's you know we're, we're all playing with these time dynamics but the more right. people that get into this absolute zero point presence you can't play with it the way that you used to anymore because mm. the bifurcation is too wide. Mm. You know, you get people who are experiencing absolute now in a consistent way, and people are still experiencing density as if nothing happened. It's too wide of a gap. Right. Which is why they have this bifurcation mm. happening, which we're supposed to be experiencing between now and next July. Wow. You know, like a full blown, you know, we're just not going to see each other anymore kind of thing. And whether it means leaving the body or fading out right. or replacing yourself with some kind of holographic Makes implant it. to play out the role so people don't freak out. Yeah. I don't know yet. You know, there's still discussion. Walk-ins, I know that was something that was, you know, a yeah. term used back in the day, but it could also be a possibility. It's well, so... It's kind of like your higher self is walking in. Exactly. You know, I mean, you feel it. You're like, I don't feel anything like old Sandra at all. <laughs> I mean, people have to remind me of my past. You know, it's just like, remember that time when I'm like, uh, that doesn't exist in so, my reality anymore. You know, it's just like, you, can't, you just cannot yeah. recreate or recall that. You know, it's interesting. Right. Yeah. And I love that too, because that's a great way to let go of things that don't serve you anymore. It's just that, that cancel so clear. I mean, really nothing, mm-hmm. as far as memories go, it's only what you're holding on to that will make it continue to exist yeah and the cancel so, clear thing is like that's so clear sweet to me best. because like there was this guy back in the 80s i know first waiver <laughs> this guy back in the 80s and used to it was on a cassette tape and he used to say just say cancel 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 cancel, cancel. so really? it was like and I mean, <gasps> cancel cancel like back in the 80s and we used to use it you know it was like so much fun You're yeah like, oh cancel cancel yeah you know? And, now, and, and now it's now come back. Like I had this rebirth. Is cancel clear? I love it. I love <laughs> oh it. yeah, cancel clear feels so good because it does. It allows you to to make a mistake or go a certain way that you're like, oh, I didn't really want to go that way, and then you cancel clear. That's yeah. not that doesn't exist. Are you just Close, like higher levels uncreate? <laughs> <laughs> and you just and you send it back to source. You're like, nope, sorry. Yeah, in the little mail shoot that is, um, <laughs> I always visualize now. Here you go. <laughs> I love it. I know. I do too. Well, Sandra. I can't thank you enough. I want you guys to know, go to SandraWalter.com. Very easy (laughs) to find all of her goodies. You have a lot of, well, you do a lot of unity meditation do every Sunday. So you've got free tools in the menu. Okay. All the free tools, light Intel articles, 
that heading gives you all the weekly articles and updates on like yes you know the big cosmic hoo-ha but the free tools <laughs> section actually gives you uh grounded tools there's quite a few of them that there's are yes taken from the class that are free yes you know like, and they're in depth i will tell you they we really are you get a lot from just watching your youtube videos and reading your articles you get so much from it and the meditations i can't speak highly enough about they're just that they, you can tell that they are very channeled and they come they just come in and just whoa all of a sudden you're just it's like a portal that you can yes you can connect how to connect in a without technology it doesn't happen online it Mm -hmm. happens just when you know you look at your timepiece and you're like okay now yeah you can feel it when you start participating yeah it's like the 10 minutes leading up you're like oh yeah comes the pull oh yes it's a very strong field Mm -hmm. but it's something that you know use it Yes. Use it, everybody. It's free, it's open, and we're actually training for how we're going to create in the future. Oh. You know, how we're going to be able to co create things in the now moment by just tapping in. I love and, that you know, so those much. Solar flares blast the grid, we'll, st- we'll keep doing it. You yeah. Know, we'll, we'll just know, oh, yeah, Sunday, we'll tap in. <laughs> Sunday, we'll tap in. Oh. You know, it's training us to be able to yes. feel each other and tap into that unity consciousness field in a pure way mm-hmm. without any intention other other than connecting and assisting. Yeah. You know, it's like support, love. Yes. Purity. That's it. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you You're again welcome. so it was much. So wonderful oh. space, space with your sister, especially thank you. during this big divine Thank you. So, oh my gosh. I know it's, it's honestly so many things aligned perfectly for you to be here right now and, and share this with all of us and to the listeners. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Next week, we're, I think we're going to have Jason Stiles on next week and do a little, yeah, well, so, okay. yeah, J-Dog, um, do some some pyramid talk, you know, again, another way to amplify and help and it's very soothing, very activating. <laughs> um, but thank you all so much for tuning in. This is Hard On Radio. Sandra Walter, thank you so much and blessings. Namaste. Love you all.